Back up. Come on, then. God, I'm loving this build. Is that all you got, you ugly bastard? Ogre dead. Welcome, guys, to another one of my build videos for Back for Blood. This time, we are doing Hoffman's Mad Bomber build. I know that some of you don't like a lot of explaining taking place during these kinds of videos, and that's all right. If that's you, the cards are listed on the screen. Feel free to copy and modify to your heart's content. I will not be offended. However, for those of you who want the whole meat and potatoes of the build, including which supply lines to pursue to get each of the cards that I use during this build, then stick around for just a few minutes as I go through everything as simply and as quickly as I possibly can. Let's get started. Hoffman's passives are as follows. He has a chance to spawn ammo with every kill he does, as well as allowing his team to spawn in with a greater ammo capacity at the very start. He also has an additional offensive item slot available to him, which is why I chose Hoffman for this particular build. Hoffman is a well-organized and diligent doomsday prepper who seeks to prove his worth and be accepted as a member of the team. He is a cautious individual, a enthusiastic prepper, and a conspiracy theorist to boot. Primary weapon, the M249 LMG. This particular build revolves around Hoffman's explosives, not so much his guns or his ammo, and therefore there is no ammo cards in the deck. There's nothing to increase damage on his guns in the deck. So what we need to do is give Hoffman a weapon that has a lot of ammo from the start, and that would be an LMG. There are two LMGs in the game. They're both equally good. I prefer the M249 myself. Secondary weapon, the Desert Eagle Pistol. Semi-automatic magnum with high power. If, by some chance, you actually run out of ammo on the M249 LMG, the Desert Eagle is by far, hands down, the best pistol in the game. So it's a great secondary choice for Hoffman. So let's start looking at the cards here for Hoffman's build. Keep in mind that the first five cards are the most important because they define what the build is going to be. First off, with this Mad Bomber build, we want to start off with Bomb Squad, an offensive card. Plus 100% explosive damage, plus 35% explosive resistance. Starting to define what this character is going to be with this build. Next we have Offensive Scavenger. You can see nearby offensive accessories, more offensive accessories spawn. So this is going to give Hoffman a chance to get more grenades, molotovs, pipe bombs. We're going to follow that up with improvised explosives, plus 75% accessory damage, minus 25% swap speed. Swap speed is not really important for this build, but that plus 75% accessory damage, woohoo. Next, we go with... Grenade Training, another offensive card, plus 25% accessory damage. Stacking up the accessory damage for those grenades, molotovs, and pipe bombs. We follow this card up with Double Grenade Pouch, another offensive card, plus 2 offensive inventory, minus 10% damage dealt. That minus damage, uh, that minus 10% damage dealt, we're going to make up for that, so don't worry about that, but... Plus two offensive inventory. So, you know, Hoffman starts off as, you know, one of his passives. He starts off with an extra uh, inventory spot already. We're giving him two more here. This is good. Next, we have Down in Front. This is a defense card. While crouching, you neither take nor deal friendly fire damage. You also gain plus 10 health. Um, keep in mind that plus 10 health because we're going to lose it on another card down the down the row here. But that while crouching, you neither take nor deal friendly fire damage is huge. And here's why. If you see one of your partners is being over swarmed with ridden, he has 10 ridden all pounding on him and everything. You can crouch and throw a grenade and kill all those ridden that are on him and just clear and set him free 
without doing any damage to him, as long as you're crouched. Something to take into note, though, is when using Molotovs. Same scenario, your, your buddy is getting attacked by 10 Ridden, you crouch, you throw a Molotov over there at the group, they all start burning and everything. If you stand up while that fire is burning, your buddy will start taking damage. If you crouch back down, he'll stop taking damage. That's how this card works with Molotovs. Keep in mind that if you don't want your allies to take any damage from your Molotov, you have to remain crouched while they are standing in the fire. If throwing a grenade, it's a different story. You throw that grenade, boom, the Ridden are dead. You can stand right up and move on with your life. We're going to follow this card up with Grenade Pouch, another offensive card. This one gives us plus one offensive inventory, so we're gaining one more slot to put another grenade in. While we're in the middle of the deck, this is a good time to start thinking about giving Hoffman a little bit of heal. And there's no better card to do that with than Face Your Fears. You gain two temporary health whenever you kill a Ridden within two meters. So if you have any damage taken so far, the Ridden are swarming up on you and everything, you're shooting them point blank and everything, and that happens like all the freaking time. When you do that, you turn your missing health into temporary health. And we're going to immediately follow that card up with Numb, another defense card. Gain plus 15% damage resistance while you have temporary health. So we're getting that temporary health from Face Your Fears, the card we just played. And then while we have temporary health, we're getting plus 15% damage resistance. Great synergy here between these two cards. Now we're getting into the later cards of the build. And this is where we start complementing the build by buffing up things that we've already given Hoffman. So the next card we're gonna play is Pyro, another offensive card, plus 100% fire damage. Kills with fire grant you three temporary health. You can sense flammable objects nearby. So we already played a card earlier that helps us find accessories. This one will actually al allow us to see Molotovs through the walls and everything. It'll help us find gas cans. It'll help us see where the propane tanks are. All of which help Hoffman to be a better pyro. And those kills with the fire grant you three temporary health. And the card that we played prior to this one, Numb, gave us plus 15% damage resistance whenever we have temporary health. Between the last three cards played, Hoffman should be pretty good with his health. Next, we're going to go ahead with some mobility with Cross Trainers. In my opinion, one of the best mobility cards in the game. Plus 20% stamina, plus 20% stamina regen, plus 3% move speed, and plus 5 health. We're going to follow that up with Hyper Focus, another offense card. Plus 50% weak spot damage. Minus 75% aim down sight move speed. That minus 75% aim down sight move speed may sound like a lot, but it really won't affect your gameplay too much. And especially since this card is being played later in the deck. Yeah, don't worry about it too much. And we're going to follow this up with Superior Cardio. So like the Cross Trainers, another mobility card that's absolutely great to freaking have plus 20% stamina, plus 20% sprint efficiency, plus 5% health. We're allowing Hoffman to do a lot of moving around towards the final levels of the game. Next, we have Demolition Expert, an offensive card, plus 50% accessory damage, minus 15% ammo capacity. This is a card that's being played towards end game, so having less ammo is not going to be really that big of a deal because at this point you're going to be more concerned about taking down the bosses the, the the big guys and that's going to take your grenades and your molotovs and your pipe bombs and we want to add that plus 50 percent accessory damage at this point and we're going to round the entire deck off with our final card reckless strategy plus 30 percent weak spot damage minus five percent damage resistance 
Don't worry about that minus five damage resistance, because if you remember with the numb card, we gained plus 15% damage resistance. So yeah, we already took that into consideration. But that plus 30% weak spot damage, when you get to the final levels, especially the final level of the game, and you're fighting that big baddie, that final boss, that plus 30% weak spot damage is huge and is going to be very, very much appreciated. Not to mention three cards ago, we played the Hyper Focus where we gained plus 50% weak spot damage. So we actually have a total of plus 80% weak spot damage, which is absolutely great to have towards the end game with this build. So that's the complete build. I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. And if you make any changes to it, let me know in the comments down below because I'm always interested in seeing uh, what changes you guys actually make. And if you like this build, show me some love. Give that like button a little tickle. Anyway, guys, until next time, keep killing the Ridden. Catch you later.